Welcome back here in our DMG online program. We'll start with the next lecture regarding uh, Denta MyConnect. And of course, all of you watching right now know how important economical work is in the daily routine of the laboratory and practice. And this is exactly why DMG is working on user-friendly, efficient solutions that make your everyday work easier. Like Denta MyConnect, that's DMG's cloud-based software for the dental digital workflow, which is now the main topic of the next lecture. And who could give you a better insight on Denta MyConnect than a dentist who already works with it in his daily routine? So we therefore invited Dr. Simon Fieldhouse to give you some details on how digital workflows can be integrated into the everyday working life and which role Denta MyConnect plays in the heart as the heart of 3D printing in his practice. Dr. Simon Fieldhouse is placed near Bath in England with his own practice and he combines a passion for traditional dentistry with modern technology. And we believe that his philosophy, do it once and do it properly, perfect matches with our approach for Denta MyConnect. But see for yourself. Good afternoon. Um, I just like to say it's a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Unfortunately, I can't be in Cologne in person, but uh, DMG have very kindly asked me to give a presentation to you. And this afternoon I'll be talking about, as it says there, 3D printing using the Dentamile Connect software. Um, just to let you know, uh, as it says there, my name's Simon Fieldhouse. I'm based near Bath in England. And I've been using the uh, 3D printer from DMG for a few months now and um, the new software and so far so good. Just to give you a little bit of background, obviously, we're all familiar with our viral friend that is COVID-19 and we've all been working under rather different uh, circumstances than perhaps we're used to. And certainly over here in England, it's been quite challenging, but we, uh, we continue to work through it. We're very, very busy. And just to put everything in perspective, um, our practice um, just outside Bath is perhaps many would regard it as a, a sort of a fully digital dental practice. And this is just a sample of some of the things we have in our practice. We use prime scans for our intraoral scanner. We have a CBCT scanner. We have a prime mill. We have MCXLs. We have furnaces and we have digital printers as well now, which, of course, is what I'm talking to you about today. But this is just to give you some context. We produce most of our own crowns, most of our bridges, most of our implant crowns, and we do a lot of other digital workflows that we will touch briefly on. But mainly today, it's about the 3D printing and the Dentamile Connect software. For those of you that are new to digital dentistry, you'll hear me talking about workflows. And just to help you understand what a workflow is and what a digital workflow is, as I said, it says there, it's a repeatable pattern of activity. And in our case, it's enabled by digital and CAD CAM resources, but uh, we perform workflows every day. And uh, there's an example on the left of your screen there, um, a very, very important workflow in our country and many others making a cup of tea. So that's an example of a workflow. But as I said, we're going to be talking about digital workflows. And again, just for the sake of some context, as I said, we do pretty much everything we can digitally in our practice, and you can see a workflow of multiple uh, varieties here. And it all starts with our scanner, which um, is, as I say, we use prime scans. And in some cases, we'll do some chair side milling. In other cases, we will do some printing in-house. And as I say, that's what we're talking about. But we produce as much as we can digitally these days. Uh, we wouldn't be here without this man. This uh, is Mr. 3D Printer. His name's Chuck or Charles Hull. He's an American gentleman, still alive, and he invented the first 3D printer um, back in the 1980s. And you'll hear me talking about STL files later. And there are some people who will tell you that STL means standard tessellation language or standard triangulation language. But if you ask Chuck Hull, he said, no, nope. it's uh, an abbreviation that he dreamt up and STL, according to the man that invented all of this, means or stereolithography. So hopefully that's broken a few myths for you. So just to give you an idea, you know, what can we print? These days we can print pretty much anything from metals to ceramics to human tissue. In dentistry, obviously, we print 
crowns, we can print arch bars. And today we're going to talk about printing with polymers using the Dentamile Connect software. But this just gives you a little idea of what we can print. And again, all of the things you can see on the screen here have been printed apart from the implant crowns, though they have been done using a digital workflow. But all of the other things here have been printed, including the metal denture that was printed using um, selective laser sintering or SLS. And actually that was printed in your, in your country in Germany. And um, it's a fantastic way of producing partial dentures. So moving on. What are we here to talk about today? Specifically, we're going to talk about the Dentamile Connect software. Also, I'll be talking about the hardware that goes along with it and some of the resins as well. So when we're looking at doing 3D printing in practice in our surgeries, what are we looking for? Um, speaking personally, I want to have a software package that's easy to use, but is open, by which I mean I can import my STL files or images, or if you like, my digital impressions from anywhere. As I said, it needs to be simple. Dental people are simple people. Well, I certainly am. So I like something that's easy to use and simple and intuitive. Also, the programming, the algorithms within that programming need to be effective and accurate. If something's easy to use, but the end product is rubbish and it doesn't fit, well, it's effectively useless. I like Dentamile Connect because as well as being easy to use, very easy to import the STL files, I can actually use it anywhere. It's a cloud based package, so I don't have to have specialist software logged on to or installed rather on any of the machines in the practice. I can do this in my office upstairs in my practice. I can do it in my surgery. I can do it at home but also the laboratory can access it as well because it's cloud-based. And that's one of the most powerful aspects of this software package. And down there, it says it doesn't need to be all encompassing. What we're, we're not trying to build people's skulls here. We're not trying to reconstruct the mandible with this. So it doesn't need to have all the bells and whistles that perhaps some of the other software packages do, which realistically we're never going to use. So, Dentamile Connect, as it said there, it's uh, an innovation award winner and rightly so. And as I've said, it's an open system. It's not installed on your PCs, it's cloud-based. And the only thing I would say is just make sure because it's cloud-based, you have a good broadband connection, okay? And again, you need to make sure that the specification of your screen and your PC is good enough to deal with the 3D graphics. Other than that, very, very straightforward. So if we go on, we have in our practice, and you can see the picture on the right there, the actual um, printer installed there. We have the 3D Max. We decided we would go for the 3D Max for reasons that I'll explain a bit later. But we wanted to be able to produce a, a, quite a high volume of appliances in, by becoming what we call a print center. And I'll talk to you about that later. But you can see the printer itself on the left. And then one in from the left, we have the wash and then we have the final curing uh, unit and they all fit together very, very neatly. For those of you that have been 3D printing for a while, you'll remember the days that you would print something and then the wash usually involved a bucket of alcohol and a big spoon and you'd stir something around and it just wasn't. It just didn't feel right, did it? So this this is all rather neat, very simple and very effective. So, yes, we have the 3D Max printer and also, of course, you need good materials. And those, as we say, lovely DMG people have produced a range of really good polymers. Uh, they're all RFID. would So depending on what we're printing, the RFID tag on the bottle is put up against the printer as part of the workflow. So the printer knows what it's using. And you can see the list on the left there. We've got model tray, ortho, ortho plus. So that's a slightly different resin. And then we have flexible resins. We can print models, gingiva as well, or other models for the cast. So there's a good range of materials. And of course, they're working on these all the time. So we've got good software, good printer, good materials. So if we think about a clinical case. If you imagine, well, this is, this is a real clinical case. We have a 35-year-old female patient who attended my surgery, fit and healthy, no relevant medical history, She's been married with two children and is an IT consultant. And her main presenting complaints was pain in her jaws, especially when waking, 
She also used to get a lot of headaches in the temporal region. And she would notice that after chewing, she'd have pain in her face, as she described it. And this had been going on for two or three months. When we asked her for more questions, it turned out that it could also get worse through the day. She also used to get a lot of stiffness in her neck and shoulders and physical examination. We saw we were getting some trigger point tenderness in her upper trapezius muscle, her sternocleidomastoid muscle and the masseter's temporalis muscle. They were tender. And there was also pain referred to the temporal region from the trigger points in the trapezius. So having eliminated any other possible causes of the pain, we came up with a diagnosis of a TMD or TMJPDS, depending on what you call want to call it. And we agreed that an occlusal splint or Michigan splint in this case would help her because her symptoms she felt were significant enough to warrant that. And also some soft tissue treatment as well. And for those of you that do supply your patients with splints, I'm, I'm sure a number of you advise uh, or even arrange some soft tissue work to be done on the neck and shoulder musculature, because in combination with the splint, that can be very, very helpful. So we agreed we would make our patient a splint. And then to get into the workflow in more detail, we were then able to do our digital impression. And we did it straight away. As I said, we used the Dents Plicer owner Prime Scan which in, in my opinion is about the best scanner out there at the moment. Very fast, very accurate um, and very uh, good quality in images as well. We then are able to export the STL file and you can either do that by putting it onto a USB stick or in our surgery, everything is networked. So we can literally just send it from one computer to another or one drive to another. We then import the STL file into the Dentamile uh, software and then we carry on with the design process you can see myself and Amy my nurse in the photograph there looking at it in the laboratory that we have in our practice now you don't need a laboratory as I said you can do this in your surgery in your office or even at home the design stage and as I said it's all cloud-based and from start to finish with the digital impression and the importing the SDL file design perhaps takes 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on how many flights of stairs you might wish to go up to, to the, uh, the other computer that you're using. So once we've designed it, um, just a few tips about the clinical side of things. When you're taking digital impressions, make sure you've got some good retraction in place. OK, now you can see on the left, we've got an Optrigate. We've got some uh, retractors, cheap retractors as well in the middle. Uh, I wouldn't recommend the cotton wool roll and Langenbeck um, approach at the top. But I find that the most effective way for me is my nurse has two mirrors. I have a mirror and the scanner. And the great thing about doing that is you can move the retraction around to where you need it. But as I say, you'll find a way that suits you. And you can see just a little video here of how we do it. And it takes a matter of seconds to get a really good quality, high quality image. Um, very, very straightforward. Good. So once we've got the image and we've imported the STL file into the software, we then are able to design our um, occlusal splint. It gives you an option to choose the thickness of the splint. We are able to freehand design the actual profile of the splint and on the left image you can see there we're able to adjust the thickness of the splint it's marking the areas where it's thinnest um, this is a video taken directly from the screen and it as i said it's a really simple software so long as you have the right um, hardware it works extremely well and you've got your good broadband connection and then at the end of the process just before we actually go on to print it we're able to have a look at a virtual mock-up of the splint. And then the next thing we would go on to is actually physically manufacturing the splint. So we send the design to our printer. And then once the actual print uh, splint comes out of the printer, we then move on to the wash cycle. Uh, depending on the thickness of each layer, it will take up to 45 minutes to print off a single splint. OK, now, as you can see from the graphic there, the stages of finishing and printing 
the splint are actually done by a team member. My nurses have been trained how to use the equipment, so I'm not involved. I've designed it, but they're actually manufacturing it, which means that I can then get on and do something else. Now, that might be see another patient. It might be write some emails. It might be have a cup of tea. You know, it, it gives me some flexibility, which is great. And also the staff members, the girls really enjoy doing this. They feel more involved with the whole process and uh, we actually pay them to do it. And then in the final picture, you can see we fitted the occlusal splint and we've done a number of these now. And I have to say um, they fit extremely well. All of the patients that are having them are benefiting from them as well. Their symptoms are improving um, and I haven't had to adjust a single one yet, which is actually really unusual. We've polished some, obviously, but the fit is extremely good. So I've been very, very impressed with the quality of the end product with the occlusal splint. So at the moment, it, as I said, it's early days for us in the Dutch Barton in our practice, but we have done a lot of occlusal splints. We've done some soft bite raising appliances with uh, another material, the flexi material. Uh, we're able to print some very nice models and special trays. And the other thing that we are doing quite a lot of is what we would call whitening trays, but I, I think my uh, German colleagues call them bleaching splints. Now at the moment with the version of the software that we have, we have, we have to kind of do a workaround. And we, we tell the software we're making an occlusal splint and then we adjust the thickness of it. So we can only do one at a time, which is a bit of a nuisance, um, though we are getting down to a thickness of 0.3 millimetres and we're producing some really nice whitening trays. Um, we fed this back, you know, there are others uh, doing this as well, and said to the, uh, the DMG people, it would be much better if we could do two at a time and we could have a little bit more control over what's going on with the thickness and the design of the whitening trays. So I will say no more than that, but as you can see here, I've said it's a clunky workflow um, and ideally there would be some changes to how we do it at the moment. As I say, I will say no more, but I have a funny feeling that DMG might be talking about whitening splints, whitening trays, bleaching splints in another, in another presentation. Okay, um, but, in spite of what I'm hoping will happen in terms of some updates with software, uh, it's still a very useful workflow. If you can imagine a patient attends your practice, they're interested in having their teeth whitened. Uh, we take our impressions and while we're making their splints, which realistically takes about 25 to 35 minutes, they could be seeing our hygienist for, you will call it prophylaxis, we would call it a hygienist visit. So within an hour, realistically, a patient who wants to have some whitening could come in, have their impressions taken, see the hygienist, and then have their bleaching splints fitted. That's a really efficient workflow. It's great for you, but it's also really good for your patients. You know, time is precious to everybody. And certainly, um, if things continue to improve with the Dentamile software, which I believe they will, um, this will be a really, really efficient uh, and timely workflow. Other things we're working on, surgical guides. We do a lot of implants in our practice. And um, at the moment, if we're doing single fixtures, we will mill them using the Cerex software. And we, they produce really nice, accurate guides. But for multiple fixtures, we print them. Um, and certainly that is becoming an easier workflow for us and i'm, I'm really excited about being able to present uh, to print even more uh, multiple fixture splints using the uh, the dmg software um, we're looking also at um, being able to print aligners and retainers but we haven't got there yet but obviously we need to talk about materials with that just as an aside if you are uh, doing implants and considering making your own um, surgical guides um, you need to look at the cost of all these things i mean obviously we've invested quite heavily in a lot of digital um, equipment and a lot of people think oh well that's an expensive piece of kit um, am i going to see a return on it the reality is yes you absolutely will if you're doing a moderate amount of work the capital expenditure you put into buying 
your equipment, whether it be a printer, whether it be a digital intraoral scanner, or whether it be a mill, is not as well as a laboratory fee. It's instead of it. So you need to consider that. And if you look at the numbers there, I'm sorry they're in pounds sterling, but the cost in materials to make a multiple fixture surgical guide is about three pounds. And I'm sure, so that's what's that, four euros maybe, um, probably a bit less than that, actually more like 350. And so I'm sure you at the moment spend a lot more than that. So you need to have a good look at the business case for doing digital uh, dentistry in general, but also specifically being able to print your own things. Other things that we're talking about here um, and things I really like about with the Dentamile Connect is, as I said earlier on, the flexibility and the connectivity, the fact that it's cloud based is brilliant because, as I said before, I can do this anywhere. Obviously, the patient has to be in the surgery, but after that, doesn't I could be on the beach, literally. Bit sad if I was doing this on the beach, but hey, it's possible. Um, so there are scenarios where we would do an in-house design and print. So we'd literally do our impressions, design it ourselves, print it and give it to the patient. And that's a really neat workflow, very efficient. But it may be that it's a little bit more complicated. And I'll say to the laboratory, do you know, I'd like you to design this. So we'll do the digital impressions, we'll upload the STL file, and then they will do the design for us because in the end, they're very good at that. But then we on site can print their design. And that's, that's really, really useful. And um, there, there are some environmental benefits to this that you need to think about lack of, you know, posting things, lack of things being connect, collected or delivered. That that's that's quite an important bonus to this whole concept. Um, we talk there about multiple practices and corporate models. We're looking at becoming a print center. So if you can imagine you have a group of practices who have intraoral scanners um, within, say, a 30 kilometer radius of where you are um, could it be possibly that they will send their STL files to you they might even design them themselves but then you print off multiple splints for different practices could that be a possible business model it's certainly something that we're looking at um, and we're also looking at a design and print center for surgical guides you know people send us regularly patients yes for treatment and implants but sometimes we just do the cbct for them but we're going to be offering a service that will do the cbct but will also design and manufacture their surgical guide and again that's something you can think about and the ease of use of the dentamile connect for this and the other software that goes alongside it what makes that makes that possible so we're quite excited about that so we talked briefly about um, you know some of the financial aspects you need to think about there are doing dentistry in general digi digitally has massive benefits in terms of obviously the patients much prefer not to have um, alginate or silicon impressions they hate it you know single visit same day dentistry is very very popular digital impressions are very very accurate and, you know, the reality is with um, digital impressions, you're going to have to remake things far less frequently. So far, we haven't had to remake a single splint that we've made with this printer as a result of inaccuracies. The accuracy is really impressive. As I said before, you know, there are financial benefits to this. And if you look at, you know, I will pay a laboratory about £150 sterling for a Michigan splint and up to £300 or more for a surgical guide for my implant placement. Now, I can do the design very quickly and very easily in a matter of minutes. And the materials cost, as it says there, very, very much lower. So it's early days for Dentamal Connect, but so far I've been really impressed with it. It's very, very easy to use. It's producing good quality, very, very accurate appliances. And the, the thing that is perhaps most encouraging is that the designers and the people behind it are listening to what we're saying. And you can't say that about every company. You know, you can feedback as much as you like, and it just seems to be falling on deaf ears. That so far is not the case with DMG. I've been really impressed with that. So we're sort of coming to the end of the presentation now. Some of you will be pleased to know. Um, there are some concepts here about digital dentistry in general. And in terms of digital impressions, we talk about opportunities for error. And of course, with a digital impression, you're transmitting, whether it be an STL file on a USB stick 
or you're transmitting it via email somewhere. The opportunities for error in terms of your alginate getting hot or cold or um, it getting wet or something like that, it's just not possible. We're not pouring stone models. We're not, there's no delay because of that. Um, we're not dropping models. As I said, it's very, very clear and uh, accurate, the impression. The communication is better. If I'm uploading an STL file to the software on the cloud, then that's exactly what the laboratory is going to get. And of course, that makes it easier for them to interpret as well. And let's not forget the environmental sort of benefits of doing things digitally and printing things ourselves, as it said before. We're not using any materials to take impressions. We're not posting things anywhere. A van isn't coming, running diesel, collecting things. Uh, we're making uh, or we're remaking fewer, I should say. And yes, the single visit or fewer visits for patients, there are environmental benefits to that, never mind their time. As I said, there are no models, of course. Though, of course, there are, if you do need to use a model, there are now recyclable or biodegradable models out there or biodegradable models out there. So hopefully um, I've given you some idea of what I think of Dentamal Connect. I, I'm very impressed with it so far. I'm looking forward to the developments. Certainly the workflows and the connectivity of the software are very impressive, very easy. And um, this, this is going to be a really important part of our practice and you need to think very carefully about whether or not it will work for you and i would say in a number of cases it will having your own printer on site is going to become more and more important so thank you very much for your time if any of you want to contact me directly um, you're more than welcome to do so you can see my email is at the bottom of the slide there so uh, if you want to send me an email please do other than that thank you for listening Yeah, hi Simon. Um, thanks first of all for your presentation and good to see you. How are you today? Yes, good. Thank you. It's the end of the week, which always helps. Yeah, Friday so, yeah, is always great. the best day of the week, huh? isn't it's it? It's a good day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got some questions for you in the chat. Um, and the first is, how do digital workflows influence your work day to day uh, as a dentist? <gasps> how long have you got? Um, gosh, Take your I mean, time. Enormously, enormously, yes. Uh, the, I think a great example of how good it is is when I asked the, the, the nurses here, I said, do you fancy going back to working the old way in the what we call analogue? And they just look at me as though I'm perhaps unwell. Uh, I mean, it, it just makes a uh, huge difference to me, to the staff, but most importantly to the patients. So we're more efficient we're doing better dentistry the thing with doing things digitally is we're looking at what we're doing all day every day so things like crown preps get better but so do our impressions you know the days of laboratories receiving rubbish impressions that are over um, and certainly with specifically with dentamal connect um, as i said in the, in the presentation it, it's a really nice piece of software very easy to use and I sort of look forward to um, the developments, which I think are hopefully coming through. Does, does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Thanks a lot. Okay. And we've got another one for you. Um, some people are seeing high investment costs going digital. What do you think about that? Um, that's something I'm asked quite a lot. And yes, in terms of capital expenditure, the equipment is expensive if you just look at euros. Um, but as I said in the presentation, what you have to remember, depending on what you're doing, is it, you're, the investment you're making is instead of laboratory fees. So if you're going to be printing things yourself, you're not going to be paying a laboratory to do that. So as, as, as you could see in the presentation, just thinking splints, for example, the actual cost of making a splint in euros or pounds sterling is so much less. And if you're doing a number of these things, then uh, that makes quite a difference. And certainly in terms of digital dentistry in general, we mill a lot of crowns here. We make implant crowns. And so in digital dentistry in general, we are enormously 
more profitable than we were when we did things in the old way, taking impressions and, and, and sending them to laboratories. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we don't use laboratories. We do. And because we're doing things digitally, our communication with the laboratory is so much better because the quality of information they're getting is better. And of course, again, with the Dentamile, if, as I said, if I look at something and I think this might be quite tricky to design, of course, they can just access the STL file that I've uploaded. They'll do the tricky designing bit and then we'll print it off here. And again, there's the, there's the whole sort of environmental benefit there. So short answer, doing things digitally will make you more profitable. Yeah, uh, thanks for the insight. Um, that sounds uh, quite good and quite promising. And we've got another question for you. Um, managing a digital practice with digital workflows, can you see any impacts on the patient experience in your daily work? Absolutely massive. Yes, I mean, we, we talked about single visit dentistry. As I've said before, time is very precious to everybody. Uh, and so if we are doing things in an hour or so in one visit, whether it be a Michigan splint, whitening trays, bleaching splints, as, the, as, as you call them, um, crowns, bridges, implant crowns, whatever it is, digital, as I said, is very much more efficient in terms of time um, the patients are getting a better product. It, it, it makes us more self-aware, which is a bit of a scary concept when you're talking about artificial intelligence and sort of referring to the Terminator there, but don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, patient experience much better. They don't like impressions. Um, they're very impressed by the technology. We, we are now getting new patients who are coming to see us because they know we do things digitally which I wasn't expecting at first, but now that's very much a factor. Uh, new patients, oh, I see you do things digitally. That's very impressive and, and they like that. Yeah, that's uh, quite interesting to hear. Uh, thanks for that. We've got one last question for you, uh, Simon, oh. uh, which is, um, how's the quality of the printed splints in your opinion? Well, again, as I said in the, in the, in the presentation, um, they're very good. You know, the, the, the designing process is easy. Um, obviously, we're putting in very accurate SDL files. The digital impressions are accurate. They have to be. But the, the actual software works really, really well. And what we're producing, it, it, it so far, everyone has fitted perfectly. Um, I've, I've not had to adjust any, which is really surprising. I mean, having said that, we've done a lot of things. Well, we've done most of our work digitally for a number of years now. So until we had our printer and the Dentamile software, um, we would do some digital impressions. They'd be sent to the laboratory electronically and we'd get a splint that fitted perfectly. Um, now we're doing the impressions, making the splint ourselves, and it fits perfectly. Um, so again, there's an efficiency there. So yeah, so far so good. Yeah, that sounds good. And I think that's also a good conclusion for our interview. So thanks for being with us, Simon. And I wish you a nice Friday evening and a good weekend. Talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. And to you. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay.